Welcome back to the TCM YouTube channel, where I'm delighted to say that today we have our first guest of 2024, and that is Lancashire all all-rounder George Balderson. George, thank you very much for joining us. Let's just start by asking you, how has your winter been? How are you getting on? How are you feeling going into the new season? Oh, first of all, thank, thanks for having me on. Um, I mean, it's been, as always, a, a long, hard winter. Um, I guess for me, I've been able to sort of split it into two hours because I was on the uh, the Lions training programme before Christmas. So that was, you know, a really good opportunity, some good fun out in Abu Dhabi before Christmas. Um, and then since then, just been... Um, working away at a few things in my game in the indoor school for a few weeks and then looking forward to, you know, pre-season tours and, and before you know it, we'll be back around in April. We will and we'll get into all those things that you mentioned a little bit later on. But first, obviously England are playing India in the Test Match series right now and as a Lancashire fan myself, it's been brilliant to see Tom Hartley going out there and being brilliant as we all know he is. What have you made of him so far in the first test match i'm just absolutely thrilled for him because um you know as as always when one of your mates or, or one of the boys from lance goes and succeeds at the next level it's just a great thing to watch and i think we all had the same sort of feeling watching it after that first innings where you know things weren't going his way and there was almost a bit of doubt and a bit of worry in everyone's mind and and the way he came back was absolutely brilliant and i'm not i'm not surprised at all that he's he's gone out there and done well because He's got the personality to cope with them sort of situations. He's he's a pretty laid back fella, and um, I'm not surprised that he's recovered from that first innings, and hopefully he'll go on and do well in the next four tests as well. I think my favourite thing was seeing uh, those videos of him dancing on the tables. Oh, at, uh, unbelievable! It's like called cricket club. Um, <laughs> Big up Ormskirk cricket club as well. Big up Ormskirk. Half an hour from where I live, and it's yeah, yeah what a place. <laughs> Um, okay, so just to move on, um, on to sort of looking back on the on the uh, 2023 season. So obviously, George, we spoke at the start of last season, um, and I remember when when interviewing you that you know your sort of one of your key things that you got across to me was that you wanted to cement yourself as as a, a mainstay in that Lancashire Rebel side, and that you felt that you'd done that work over the winter to sort of um, you know progress your game to the level where you could do that consistently. I think from my perspective it and, and, and anyone's perspective, it looks safe to say you've done that. Um, but do you just want to give us a bit of an idea as to, you know, what went right for you last season and um, and why why we now look at you as having one young player of the year um, for Lanks? I think it was um, a combination of things last year. I um, actually started the season out of the side um, due to our overseas signing with Colin de Grandon being there. And I think that, sort of gave me even more motivation than I had going into the start of the season to sort of, you know, once I got my opportunity to make sure that no one could drop me based on any sort of performance. Um, and then when I got in the side, you know, I knew that I was playing good cricket. The messages I was getting from coaching staff were that, you know, you're playing well. The, the reason you're not in the side is purely because we've got a world-class international all-rounder here as the overseas player. Um so when I got my opportunity, I was confident. I felt my game was in a good place. And then as it always happens, you know, confidence breeds confidence. The more runs you score, the better you feel. Um, and for me, you know, as soon as I came into the side, I did well. And then that just completely relaxes you and allows you to go and perform even better. And I think I just got on a bit of a roll. Um, and hopefully, like, coming into this season, I can, you know, do the same thing again and keep that confidence running and, and keep improving. Now, obviously, you're part of quite a young crop of players which keep coming through the academy of Lancashire. I think one of the strengths that we have as, that, that Lancashire has as a team is bringing these young people through. Um, from your perspective, what is it that the Lancashire setup has done so well to allow you to get to this point in your career? I think it's just, you know, time and quality of coaching. Um, as soon as you come onto the academy, you get opportunities to train as much as you want with high level coaches. They're very good at integrating sort of professional setup with the academy. So, for example, I'm I'm off to Sri Lanka in two weeks time on an academy tour. We've got the eight lads on the academy. Well, I think it's eight or nine lads. And then we've got five professional players going with them. Um, and that's a great opportunity for, you know, young players to learn about professional cricket and 
sort of bridge that gap into stepping into the professional environment. And I remember from my point of view going on a, an academy tour when I was 16, 17, and, and Tom Bailey and Jordan Clark were the two pros who came with us. And, you know, getting a chance to spend time around them um, was really crucial to, you know, kicking on and getting into the professional game. But I think as well, more than anything, is just the fact that within the county of Lancashire, we have got a lot of good cricketers. We've got some of the strongest league setups in the country. You know, the Lancashire League, the Liverpool Comp. I mean, I, I came through the, the Cheshire League system. And when you've got that many good leagues around and that many good young cricketers, it makes it even more competitive. And then, you know, that can only spur you on to be a better player. I just want to touch on what you said with obviously learning from um, from Clark and, and, and from Bailey on that academy tour. So obviously you mentioned De Grandhomme and then obviously one of Lancashire's overseas signings um, last, last season was, was Daryl Mitchell. What was it like learning from them two um, as, you know, World Cup finalists and, uh, and guys that have, you know, delivered right at the very top top level and are also guys that play a very similar style of cricket to yourself in terms of being, you know, uh, strong with both the bat and the ball? Yeah, they were, they were absolutely fantastic, both of them. Um, you know, the thing that they had, again, I talk about like time and, and effort, they had time for the younger players. They... Um, they both acknowledged, I think, when they turned up that their role as a as an overseas player in this in our setup wasn't just to come and perform and go away. It was to, you know, perform but also help bring on us younger players. Um I remember, you know, you go out for dinner in the middle of a four day game and, and you're having conversations with Daryl Mitchell about your style of batting and same with Cole, um about bowling, batting, whatever, and just experiences within the game. Um and, you know, I think for me at the start of last year, I I was, you know, initially when you see that we've signed them, it's almost like, oh, you know, I'm, I might not play early season, you're disappointed. But you can actually flip that very easily and figure out that in the long run, being around people who, like you said, play similar roles to me in the side, it can only benefit your game in the long run. And it'll be the same for our young spinners this year with Nathan Lyon coming. You know, possibly it may limit game time. It, it at moments, but they're going to get opportunities to learn off him, and and you know that's a special thing. Nathan Lyon and Jimmy Anderson in the same dressing room is uh, something I I would love to be a fly on the wall of. <laughs> it should so, be good. Yeah, obviously with Nathan Lyon signing for Lancashire, big signing out the blocks for you. Do you think you will be able to learn? from him and what do you think it will be like having someone with such a wealth of experience in that dressing room for the bulk of the season next year yeah i think it'll be absolutely fantastic um i've never i don't think there's many of us within the change room who have met him before but by all accounts he's, he's a great fella um a team man i mean you see him in the australian setup he's he's the one who leads the team song he seems to be you know a team first kind of player um, but I think just the quality he'll bring, you know, we struggled to win games at Old Trafford. We have done for the last few years now. Um, and, you know, having a good spinner at a ground that potentially, well, not a good spinner, a world-class spinner at a ground that sort of takes a bit of spin will hopefully give us a bit of an edge, you know, when we've just fallen short at times over the last few years. And obviously falling short, last year there was a lack of silverware do you think the team felt hard done at the end of the season last year? Because I think from my perspective as a fan, I felt that we didn't actually lose by big margins or lose in a way that felt like we should be losing, if that makes sense. did Was there a sense of that in the team? Did you feel hard done by no silverware? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think if we just start with the, the four-day game, um, you know, we only lost one game all season. Um and it's an easy excuse to say you're hampered by the weather at times, but we know we were in a few games. There was chances that we had to win games and, and rain got in the way. Um, but at the end of the day, we've got to be better at finding ways to win win games on, on good pitches at Old Trafford. Um, we know it's let us down in the past and sometimes we're probably a little bit guilty of just, you know, moaning about the pitch being too flat and, and this and that. But in reality... We know what it's going to be like. We've got to come into the season prepared to go and 
play aggressive cricket to try and win games. I mean, you look at the way that the England team are doing it at the moment. It doesn't matter whether the pitch is flat or not. They're going out there to get a result. Um, and I think that's that, that that's going to be an attitude that we, we're going to have going into the season this year. I just want to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a bit of, bit of promotion for yourself here, but also just for the people at home as well. Um, I'm, I'm just going to read out your stats from the county championship in 2023. And it's, it's 11 matches, 16 innings, 702 runs at 46.8, 200 and 450s with a high score of 116. And then with the ball, 11 matches, 17 innings, 23 wickets at 34 um, and best of four for 69. Now, I know the game isn't all stats, but you know, hearing that and listening to that, how do you feel about your performance, and and what do you think you can still improve looking forward going into next season? I think I was I was very happy with my batting performances last year. Um, I think them stats sort of show the improvement that I've made, and and it's nice to sort of see that justification down there in numbers. Um, I think for me, in terms of improvement, I want to get myself higher at the batting order if I can. You know, I've scored most of them runs batting at six or seven last year, and I think I've got the ability to bat higher in the order. Um, and then also when I look at them bowling stats, averaging 34, I know I can be better than that. Um, and, you know, you look at some of the, the true best all-rounders in the division, uh, you look at someone like a Liam Dawson as a spinner, a spin bowling all-rounder, he averages, you know, mid 40s with the bat and and low 20s with the ball and I, I want to strive to be in that sort of place um again tough at old trafford as a, as a medium pace seamer without any sort of you know x factor pace or or a big spinner of the ball or whatever but that's got to be something that i've got to try and improve and and again find ways to take wickets on pitches like that and, and bring that average down a little bit are there are there things that you picked up from from people like say the and 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 mitchell as to those, you know, those variations and 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 little tweaks that you can you can bring to your bowling on on flatter tracks. Yeah, I think seeing seeing Daz Mitchell when he he was bowling at times at Old Trafford, he just didn't necessarily bowl really long spells, but he'd he'd come on and with a real focus and an attitude to try and take wickets. He might, even though he wasn't the quickest, might bowl bouncers with a couple of men out. Might have catchers around in front of the bat, and I think more than anything, it's just the tactical side of the game and trying to figure out how you can be imaginative with the field and your mindset towards towards bowling to try and be a bit more effective because I know that if you give me a green seamer I'm going to be effective uh, and I think I've shown that at times but um, you know on, on better pitches uh, can I find a way to contribute wickets and, and get us wins with the ball as well as the bat let's, um, let's take a turn then to look at this season ahead coming up and it's all changed at Lancashire, really. Head coach, new head coach and Dale Birkenstein, obviously Graham Onions and Glenn Chapel have departed. Also, Rob Jones, Matt Parkinson, Danny Lamb departed last season. What are you thinking ahead of the season, given the new coaching personnel, the new ins and outs? And um, maybe if you can just let us inside the dressing room a bit, what's it been like with the new new coach coming in? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been strange, actually, because not a lot of the lads are at home at the moment. So um, it's hard to get a real feel as a team. And I think we'll start to feel that when we, we get away on pre-season tour in March and all the lads come back together. But I think at the moment, it's a real sense of optimism and you know excitement about what, what we can go and achieve this season. Uh, we've met Benke before. he Or most of the lads have met him before because he, um, he did some work with us a couple of years ago as like a batting consultant. Um, and personally, my my game really improved from that month or two that I spent with him. So uh, I'm thrilled for when he when he comes in. He's away at the uh, SA20 at the moment. So um, he's not actually in at the moment. But um, I think we're just all really excited. Uh, we've got a few different coaches as well. Craig White's in as our bowling coach. And he's a great man. And he's going to be really good for all of us young bowlers. Uh, and Steve Croft as well. Good old Crofty. He's, um, he's doing a lot of the batting coaching at the moment. So... That's absolutely fantastic. We all love Crofty. He's a he's a great man, and you can tell he's going to be a fantastic coach as well. Absolutely, and obviously Crofty is someone who we all love, and the fact that he's sticking around makes me very, very happy. Um, so, looking ahead to this summer, 
Ben Stokes no longer bowling, Wokes aging. England might need a seam bowling all rounder in the not too distant future, George. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Does that ever play on your mind a little bit, especially seeing how young young players are being called up to this England side now? I don't think it plays on on my mind really. No, I think um, I've got a long way to go to improve before uh, I think I'm, you know going to play at that level or, you know, going to be good enough to play at that level. But, you know, like you say, it, it's happened quickly for people recently. Um, and I think you're never, you're never quite as far away as you think. I think that was, that was a lot of the messages on this uh, Lions camp before Christmas was that, you know, I think most of us young lads there look at the test squad and whatever, and we think that's a million miles away. And, and they were sort of saying to us, you know, you're never quite as far away as you think. So, um but my focus, obviously, is just go and perform for Lanks, try and win some games for us, and then I think anything like that would, would look after itself. I, I'd just like to sort of focus in on that Lions camp in, uh, in the UAE. Uh, I think it was November to December, wasn't it? Um, if you could just sort of give us a little bit of an idea of the sort of the vibes and the atmosphere around that, and obviously probably quite a positive place to be, I'd imagine, um, with, with how English cricket and English test cricket is at the minute. But, you know, who, who were maybe some of the some of the people that you, you know, um, spent spent a lot of time with and and you know were 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 impressed by. Yeah, like you said, the positive vibe from the England camp filtered down into that Lions camp. Um, it was it was a bit strange, I think, for me at first. Um, almost having that freedom, I didn't really know what to do with it. Uh, and I think at times, you know, you try and play shots that you may be not capable of playing because you're just trying to be free all the time. And and eventually you realise that it's just all about having positive intent and soaking up pressure and trying to put pressure back on the opposition. And it was, you know, a really great environment to be involved in. Um, I think in terms of people who impressed me, um, phew, there, was, there was a few, to be honest. They were all very good cricketers. Obviously, Bashir now in the, the test squad, he bowled really nicely in a three-day game that we played against Afghanistan. Uh, and then a lad that I spend a lot of time with because I've played a lot with him growing up, uh, Dan Mosley from Warwickshire. He's um, he's a real character and he's um, <laughs> he's good fun to be around. So I spent quite a bit of time with him and he's um, he's got all the shots. So he's a good lad and he, he played well. And well, I say impressed me. I already knew he was a good player, but further <laughs> that in my mind. I wanted to also touch on, so obviously being being selected for this, for, for this Lions camp, um, you know that was very much centered around sort of the rebel rebel side of the game, but where with the current cricket landscape, feel you know, you feel like you're sort of at the minute on a track as a rebel player and more of a rebel specialist because obviously your your performances in the one day cup, uh, in it you know last summer were were fantastic for Lancashire as well, and how do you see your game starting to develop, um, and 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 has the current cricket landscape with the way that things are going, um. Has that affected, you know, how you think about the skills that you're learning and the, and, and and the way you're going, really? Yeah, I mean, for me, I love the Red Bull game. It's what has always been my strength. Um, but I want to play 2020 cricket. I want to be involved in front of them full houses at Old Trafford on a Friday night. Um, I want to play in these Roses games on TV. And, you know, if you, if you look at the way the cricket landscape's going... The white ball game is where the money is at the moment. And I think as young players, that's an exciting thing if you can try and find a way to improve your, your 2020 game. And, um, you know, since I've come back from that Lions camp, uh, I've had a bit of a white ball focus in my training. Um, been working on a bit of power hitting, a um, few variations uh, with the ball as well. And it's something that I want to try and target this year is to try and get in our 2020 side and, and make an impact, you know, with the, the 2020 World Cup this summer. Uh, and will potentially have a few lads involved in that England squad. There might be opportunities to make a breakthrough into that 2020 side. And, and that's something that I'm setting my eyes on going into this year. So if that's very much on your agenda, then I wonder, like the differences between the two games, how much of a difference is there for you as a player, particularly in terms of mindset going into, as you say, T20 perhaps under the lights at Old Trafford, as opposed to a championship game on a Thursday at Old Trafford, where there's not much big, there's mm -hmm. not a big crowd, apart from me, shadows like me. But um, 
like what do you think about those those differences and how do you wrap your head around going from one format to the next to be fair i think the the fundal, fundamental basics of the game don't change you're still sort of at the top of your mark as a bowler trying to execute a skill and as a batter you're still you know reacting to to the ball coming down at you and trying to find ways to score runs obviously the, the game's played at a different pace and it does require different skill sets a lot of the time um Hence why, obviously, I haven't played any 2020 cricket and, and I've done OK in the in the four-day game. Um, but at the end of the day, despite the fact in Championship cricket, there's no one there in the crowd. There's still an internal pressure from everyone in the group and, you know, your own willingness to perform. Um, but, yeah, the, the games do feel a long way apart to me at times, uh, probably because of my difference in skill sets. Um, but... You know, it's still it's still cricket. It's still a game. It's still you know watching the ball and, and trying to hit it. And uh, it's 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 a difficult question to ask answer that. Um, it's just very different, but also the same. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I haven't played under the lights at Old Trafford in a Roses game or anything, so it's hard for me to sort of compare the two. Well, twenty twenty four. That's uh, that's where it happens. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Um, I just want to talk a little bit about. I, I mentioned earlier the the, uh, the Young Player of the Year award from uh, from Lancashire last last summer. Um, you know how proud of a moment was that as someone that's come through the academy setup and you know come through local leagues and things like that to play play for your county. Um, you know, just just talk us through how you found out about that and and sort of the evening. You know, getting that award. Yeah, it's it's always nice when you get sort of like personal accolades. Um... But it's nice, it's nice when you get that trophy and you read some of the names on it and see the young players that have got their name on that award and, and what they've gone on to do. And I think for me, more than anything, you see these other names on the trophy and, and you just want to go and try and emulate some of the success that they've had in their career. Um, it's just sort of, in my head, a nice little tick and, and something to now move on with and, and go and you know improve and, and try and, at some point, get your name on the actual player of the year trophy and win more games for the club. And, and that's how you end up getting your name on them trophies. A few words in Josh Bohannon's ear uh, over pre-season to try and try and get some tips. <laughs> yeah, maybe. He had a hell of a year. He yeah. certainly did, but uh, you did too. Don't put yourself down like that. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I watched you a lot in the One Day Cup um, throughout 2020. Uh, 2023 what's it like playing in a tournament like that um because that itself felt quite quick paced to me it's one of those ones where you've got you're playing at the smaller grounds you've got to change the gears through your innings and adapt to conditions perhaps a little bit more than if you're at uh, maybe the bigger grounds what was the one day cup like for you last year and are you looking forward to doing it again in in, in 2024 yeah i i think it's a fantastic competition um the 50 over format for me is a great chance to show all of your skills. You've got 20, 20 elements, you know, at times in the game. You've got some pitches when you're playing on outgrounds that are sometimes, you know, low scoring affairs where it feels more like a red ball game. Um, and we get a chance to go and play it all of our outgrounds. And I mean, I might be biased here, but I think we've got the best outgrounds in the country, you know, and we play uh... all <laughs> Southport. Sebba is a great place to go and play. I mean, we haven't played at Liverpool for a while, but I've always enjoyed that as well. Um, so to go and play at them grounds, it's got sort of like an intimate feel to it. You know, we play at Blackpool and, I mean, a couple of years ago, we ended, we played the quarterfinal there against, uh, I think it was Knotts. Um, and it was like a full crowd and, you know, it's a brilliant place to play. And we get opportunities. And, and that's the brilliant thing about that competition is it us young cricketers who haven't played a lot of white ball cricket get a chance to go out there and show what we can do um, and hopefully use it as, you know, a stepping stone to go on to play to play in the Blast. Absolutely. And your Blast, we're hoping for that Blast debut in 2024. And also, you're not biased at all. I think Lancashire's outgrounds are the best as well. Um, <laughs> let's Cheltenham finish. College. Cheltenham College, Cheltenham College. Um, said no one ever. That is said a great no great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. We're going to finish by trying to get behind the cricketer. A bit of a quick fire 
round, if you will, where we're just going to ask you some quick questions, maybe outside of cricket. So let's start by going with um, this one. What is your favourite sport to play outside of cricket? Uh, golf. Any reason? Oh, not really. I think it's just a good chance to switch off. And, um, you know, one of one of my mate, one of my best mates, who won't mind me saying this, uh, I didn't really play golf until lockdown. And then um, he sort of took me on some golf courses at the back end of COVID. And uh, second round of golf, I made a hole in one and he's never had one. And he's been playing for about 15 years. And he was absolutely spewing. Um, <laughs> so uh, ever since then, I've really enjoyed it. And I haven't played as much as I wanted to recently, but um, I think for most of us cricketers, it'll be golf. Night out or night in? What's what, what, what's it like for you? Oh, good question. I'd go with a night in, I think. Mature. Um, next. Yes. Oh, not always, but... <laughs> What's your Sunday roast of choice? Bloody hell. <laughs> Probably shouldn't swear on here, should I? Uh, uh, <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> uh, That's been worse. That's been worse. I would go with pork for me. My mum's roast is fantastic. Absolutely. I, I agree. And next one, the funniest... Now, I, I, there may have to be disclaimers here. We can edit this. But the funniest club cricket story that you've ever heard. Or experience? Oh, I've got one that I've heard. I wasn't involved in it. but um, So there's a fellow who used to play with me at Hard Cricket Club called Jason Whitaker, And he's a bit of a league legend. Um, he's taken hundreds and hundreds of wickets. And before he moved to Hard, he was playing for another club. I can't remember which club it was. But um, he uh, turned around and appealed to the umpire. And the umpire was giving it not out. And they carried on appealing, went for a second appeal and appealed that hard that he dislocated his jaw and spent the rest <laughs> of the time in hospital. <laughs> That's outrageous. That is, yeah. that is unbelievable. That's so good. Mind. Say that again. Did the umpire change his mind? <laughs> no. no, well. When man breaks his jaw, you've got to put that film finger out. <laughs> dislocated his jaw and off in hospital. <laughs> Sounds like a quality. Quality Saturday. Um, this one's quite interesting. I always think who was, I mean, I don't know whether you use Spotify or some other music app, but who was your number one artist last year? Uh, I know this one, it was uh, it was Fleetwood Mac. Ooh, great, Ooh, classic. Great. classic, yeah. Um, and we'll have one more which I think defines a cricketer. Um, would you rather wear a floppy hat or a cap on field? It's a cap for me. Oh, interesting. I'm guessing so, you're a the, mod the modern cricketer. I, I am a floppy hat man. How did you guess? <laughs> uh, I, I just find it annoying when you're chasing a ball and it just keeps coming off. So if I have to go and chase a ball over my head to try and catch one and it's in the sun and the hat comes off, it'd do my head in. So streamlined cap for me. I just think the floppy hat aesthetic in, in summer just looks like proper cricket seasons upon us. Anyway, um, George, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, thanks for your time. Ben, thank you to you as well. If you enjoyed, please do uh, like and subscribe and hopefully we'll have some more interviews coming your way shortly. Um, but thank you very much for watching and it's bye-bye for now.